Well, today we have views on the de the Democratic and Republican parties. So I'm not going to like throw I'm not going to throw blows and favor one side to the other. This is basically information I've actually found out for you guys, which is I think you might find interesting. <clears throat> because apparently, just under half of Americans, which is basically forty seven percent, have a favorable a favorable view of the Democratic Party. Well, a slightly larger share, which is fifty one percent, have a unfavorable view. Which I don't see why. I mean, the Democratic Party's been trying to do a lot of changing. In fact, the whole issue with the children in the the border camps at the Mexico border has been improved by eighty four percent, according to the White House. And they're also talking about still doing that uh, ten thousand two hundred dollar um, tax thing for your unemployment checks. So. But that actually is a Democrat thing, not a Republican thing. And as here, the GOP is viewed more negatively. 38% say they have a positive view of the Republican Party, while 60% rate it unfavorably. These views are modestly changed since last summer, with a share of America's ratings of the GOP unfavorably slightly higher than it was in August. <laughs> I also find that funny because there's they're talking, uh, they're unfavorably going for the GOP, which is justified. 57% uh, was the, the beginning part, and now it's 60%. And the share of Americans with a negative view of the Democratic Party is down slightly. 53% unfavorable back then to 51% unfavorable today. About three quarters of Republicans and Republican leaning into learning independence, seventy four percent view the GOP favorably, while eighty one percent of Democrats and Democratic leaning independents view the Democratic Party positively. So basically as you see the Republicans see themselves as higher than God and the Republicans are like, eh, we're just here we're we're just here to help the people whether we get a good a good rating or not. Nearly all Republicans who say they strongly identify with the Republican Party, which 95% express a favorable option of the GOP. Among Republicans who say they not so strongly identify with the party, 77% say have, basically have a favorable view, while 56% of independents who lean towards the Republican Party say about the same. I actually got some graphs I'm going to be pulling up and showing you guys as well. To, to help illustrate what I'm saying. But let's hear, Democrats who, Democrats who very strongly identify with the Democrats party, which is 97%, nearly universally view their party favorably, as do 87% of Democrats, who describe themselves as not so strong Democrats, about six in 10 Democrats le leaners 62% have a favorable option about the Democratic Party. With both partisan groups viewing of a opposing party are, whoops, are overwhelmingly unfavorable across the board. With more than 8 of 10, 8 in 10, sorry, strong partisans, not too strong partisans, and leaners alike saying this. However, strong partisan are more likely than a weaker partisan and leaners to express very unfavorable views of the opposing party. 57% of these say that Democrats uh, are strong Democrats say that the GOP, while 47% of the strong partisan and 45% of the leaners say the same. Summarily, 66% of strong Republicans have a very unfavorable view of Democratic parties, while far smaller shares of not so strong Republicans. 38% of GOP say the same. So, as you can see, the GOP does not like the Democrats, and I'm guessing the Democrats feel about the same as far as that goes. Um, about 6 in 10 Americans. Both view, view the Republican Party and the Democratic parties as taking positions that are too extreme, while Democratic parties hold advantages with the public when it comes to governing, governing honestly and ethically and respecting the country's democratic institution. And on that topic, I'm sure you guys have already heard 
So I've posted this a few times here about the new anti-voting laws that come, that they're put in Georgia. Plus how now the Republicans in, oh my gosh, where was it? I think it was Florida, actually. This past, they basically passed a law last week sometimes saying that school administrators can now inspect your child's genitals to make sure that they're the correct gen gender when they go to a bathroom. So basically, although the Republicans say they don't support uh, pedophilia, well, apparently they do because if, since that law passed, no school administrators can go to check little kids' crotches, male or female, to see if they're a male or female for to go to the bathroom. That's just so wrong. It doesn't matter. I mean, I don't see no little 10-year-old girl becoming transgender. And that's probably going to happen a bit later on in life after she turns 18 years of age. So checking little kids' crotches to make sure they're the proper gender before they walk into the bathroom is complete bullshit. And it's just all messed up. I mean, I even have a, a video clip of you for you a bit later. It's actually not it's not a, a political one. It's actually a guy telling basically what have we done to the United States. And it actually sort of hits, hits the nail dead on the money. I'll put that a bit later in the video if you stick with me on that one. And that might be intrig intriguing for you. Let's see, about 6 and 10 say the phrase, too extreme is in positions. Describe the Republican Party very well or somewhat well, with uh, almost identical shares, 60% saying the same about the, the Democratic Party. About a quarter say this phrase describes each party very well, which is 27% for Republicans and about 26% for Democrats. Half of adults say the phrase governs in an honest and ethical way describes the Democratic Party very or somewhat well, compared to about 4 in 10, basically 41%, who say it describes the Republican Party, and well, 56% say the phrase respect the country's democratic institution and traditions describes the Democratic Party very or somewhat well, 48% say this about the GOP. So as you can see, the, the GOP is not really one out there for, you know, independence and giving the people the just desserts. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, I, I saw a video clip earlier today of the GOP talking to the press, talking about how they're trying to cock block all the Democrat stuff because they think it's too extreme, especially because they want to go around the GOP and trying to say they're trying to slow them down. Of what the GOP didn't mention in there is they've done that to the Democratic Party ever since they've had the all power in the in the Senate. I mean, let's hear they basically did that last year when they gave the rich a permanent tax cut and they used reconciliation to get that passed. And that was for the Republicans to pass that one. The Democrats was like, no, we don't want that. We want higher taxes for the rich and leave the taxes for the middle class and lower the same because we need to have money to pay for certain things. And if you think about it here, when President Trump was in office, sorry, former President Trump was in office, he tried to pass a $2.2 trillion infrastructure bill. The Republicans were all backing it. They were all just loving it. Just, you would not believe how much they loved it. And now that it's a Democrat proposing the exact same bill, and they're doing the exact same bill, the Republicans are like, no, nah, we don't want nothing to do with that now because it's coming from a different party. The Republicans got to realize that, you know what? Even Trump said this. The Democrats know how to balance our economy better than the Republicans do. And he said it in his own words. I've actually, I think I have it in one of my earlier videos of him actually saying that. So how could their leader, Donald Trump, be wrong? I mean, come on, I mean, the whole GOP is basically backing him and and becoming a bunch of traitors like Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, Mitch McConnell, and so on down the line. And, but yet he still says Democrats do better with our economy than the Republicans do. I mean, is that a bad thing or is that a good thing? I think it's a good thing. Because it basically it's the truth. I mean, I grant you back in the past, the Democrats actually weren't really too, uh, should I say, people friendly. They were more about, they were basically... What the Republicans are now. Bunch of money hungry little penny wastes. <laughs> Excuse my language. And and the roles have reversed. Now the Republicans are the, the money hungry penny wastes 
that don't want competition, hence the fact that them trying to pass Puerto, make Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C., part of the United States, and the Republicans are saying, no, we don't want that because that puts in more seats in the Senate. I mean, come on, what's the problem with that? What, Mitch, you have a problem with, uh, I don't know, having a bit of competition? I mean, just because it's a Democratic state doesn't necessarily mean that the Democrat they're going to vote in is what they want. They actually might go another way, but you'll never know because you don't like competition, Mitch McConnell. And the rest of the Republicans are just poor sports as well. But let's see here. We got views on whether each party governs honestly and respects democracy are even more sharply divided more than 7 in 10 Republicans, 72%. And about 8 in 10, or 81%, say the phrase, governs in an honest and ethical way, describes their own party very well, or somewhat well. But just 15% of Republicans and 17% of Democrats say this describes other party very well, or somewhat well. So basically, the Republicans are saying how the Democrats don't govern in an honest and ethical way, and the Democrats are basically saying that with a 2% higher margin, that the Republicans don't do that. And as you both know, as we've been seeing, seeing for the past four years before uh, good old diaper Don got out of office, Republicans don't govern our country that well. They basically like to screw us over. I mean, think about it here. We got the CARES Act last year, and then they made people wait and suffer and wait and suffer because they go, oh, yeah, well, here's some unemployment for you guys. But they didn't consider the people that can't, don't qualify for unemployment that actually only got a one time $200 check until the $600 one came out from Trump, which is the last one we got before Biden came in office. And I keep seeing all these people on most of my social media saying, yeah, well, you know what? The, who was it? It was supposed to be uh, Warn Warnock, actually. They're saying how Warnock was trying to preach about how he'd give us a $2,000 stimulus check as well as Biden. Well, that's where the, these Trump supporters are wrong. Warnock never said that he'd give us a $2,000 stimulus check because he don't have the power to do that. That power comes from the Senate and the House and is finalized by the president. The president said that he would finish the down payment that Trump started, which was a $2,000 payment, uh, down payment, right? As you remember correctly, Trump did say before he, before he got out of office and we got the $600 check from his administration that he wanted us to have $2,000 stimulus checks each, right? And the Republican Party shot that down and only gave it, gave it $600. They also shot down the unemployment and lowered it down to a lower thing. I mean, Republicans aren't here to help the middle or lower class. They're only here to help out the rich and the big conglomerates, you know, the ones that make millions and millions of dollars because they want to save them on taxes. And they're afraid that if Joe Biden raises the taxes, that most of these rich and most of these conglomerates are going to start outsourcing and we could lose millions and millions of jobs. And they're also fretting over the stock market, saying that since we have all this borrowed money going in the stock market, it's going to crash. It's going to create a bubble and it's going to sink us and we'll be dead. Well, Dead in the water, so to speak, with the with the, the um, stock market, where other economists say that you know what, this is fine. The stock market is doing good right now, and it's going to stay doing good. And you know what? That's what I want to hear: is that the stock market is doing good and it's going to stay doing good. I don't want to believe what the Republicans say because I don't. I'm not a Republican sympathizer. Yes, I'd love to see them all go to prison for all the crimes they've done to America, but everything in time, you know, because everything, <laughs> all good things come to those who wait. And that'd be a good thing for me <laughs> to see the Republicans go to jail. That'd be hilarious. Especially that quack Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's the biggest one of all. About 8 in 10 Republicans, or 81%, and 88% of Democrats say the phrase, respect the country's... De de Sorry, I can't say the word. Democratic institutions and traditions. Describes your own party very well or somewhat well. Well, about 2 in 10 say... This about the other party. So basically, the Republicans and the Democrats are in the 80% thing, saying that they actually respect the country's democracy and traditions when, in fact, we know the Republicans don't because they've been trying to keep changing Republican. Hence, the Roe versus Wade argument 
about a woman should have the right to control her own body when it comes to abortions. And the Democrat Republicans are saying, no, that's not right, with except with their limitations. And the Democrats are saying, look, this should happen because it's her body. Who's it, who's, who are we to tell her what to do with her body? I agree with, I sort of agree with both on, on this abortion thing a bit. Because if you think about it here, right, I mean, if a woman gets pregnant and there's a chance that that child could cause her her life, then it's either a choice between the unborn fetus or the current living adult. I mean, I grant you most parents probably choose a child over adult and sacrifice their life for this baby, but then the baby is born with either one parent or no parents. And that's not a good thing. I mean, there needs to be limitations on abortions. I can't say what these limitations are because that's for Congress to say. But this year, well, I've been carrying on for too long now. But for now, I am actually going to end my broadcast and I am going to say you guys have a wonderful evening and I'll speak to you later. Till then, bye. What did we do to deserve this? Well... We ruined the planet, we dispossessed, imprisoned and slaughtered First Nations people, we enforced gender roles, we systemized rape, racism, misogyny, transphobia, homophobia, ableism, classism and unsustainable food industries. We allowed fossil fuel companies to operate our elected officials like ventriloquist dummies from hell, raping our planet for economic gain. We turned the prisons and military into big business. We sold our land, our resources, our water table and the port of Darwin to the Chinese who we're now in a trade war with. We empowered the church to such a degree it's now just a tax haven for pedophiles with the ability to manipulate government policy and mandate legislation on women's bodies without their consent and we bred dogs to a superficial aesthetic level so they can no longer breathe but pugs are so cute the way they suffocate when they walk their eyes are pointing in different directions because they're asking both owners to kill them i got this feeling inside my bones you win the club just to party i'm there i get paid a fee it's right and i